Hello fans and welcome to the simulated FPHL playoffs presented by underreview.org. Tonight, the first game of the Eastern Division Finals between the Elmira Enforcers and Watertown Wolves in a rematch of last year's semifinals that saw the Elmira Enforcers move forward to the Commissioner Cups Finals. Thanks so much for tuning on in folks. I'm Zach McGinnis. These two teams, the Battle of New York, very familiar with each other, how they got here. The Elmira Enforcers took care of business against the Delaware Thunder, sweeping them by a 2-0 margin. Meanwhile, the Watertown Wolves, as the number three seed, they had to go down to Danbury. The Hattricks won the first game, but then the Watertown Wolves pull off the upset with a pair of victories led by Jeremy Pominville in net game three, a 5-3 victory ending the Danbury Hattrick season and forcing this rematch from last year. Now, before we get started, I do want to say a quick hello to the usual broadcasters for Watertown and Elmira. Hope you gentlemen are doing well. As for my usual broadcast partners, Jack O'Mara is home in New Milford, Connecticut. He's safe. He's moving up the leaderboards in Rocket League, so... If anybody's looking for a challenge out there, I'm sure he would be game. And as for Casey Bryant, well, we won't hear his voice with the elimination of the Danbury Hattricks, and perhaps even more regrettably, on Wednesday, his parents successfully childproofed the snack locker. No cookies for Casey, and on a quiet night, if you point your ears towards the north, just barely, you can still hear the anguished wails coming from New York. Casey, we hope that you figure that dastardly contraption out soon. Let's hit the loading screen and get underway between Elmira and Watertown, coming up next. Live from a sold-out first arena in Elmira, New York, the enforcers look to go to the championship series for two seasons in a row, they'll need to overcome the Watertown Wolves looking to get their third championship overall. Thanks so much for tuning on in, folks. I'm Zach McGinnis, Jeremy Pominville, Troy Passingham, your goaltenders for this evening's affair. Pominville, so strong and so important to Watertown's upset of the Danbury Hattricks. The Wolves will be counting on him some more. Ryan Marker, Ahmed Mafuz on the faceoff, and we are underway. Watertown Wolves in their gray uniforms with the black and blue trim. They'll skate from right to left on your screens at home. Elmira in their home black uniforms with the white and electric green trim. As it will be Stepan Timofeyev breaking into the Watertown zone. Timofeyev across for Yarwood. Back to Timofeyev, a shot saved by Pomaville. He couldn't hold on to the rebound. But Powell is able to get it out. Kyle Powell leading all defensemen in scoring. Gives along for Marker. Marker's shot flexed away. Couple early shots in this game. Here's Powell stepping in a shot. Saved by Passingham. Puck is loose in the slot. Eventually it ends up on the stick of Tyler Jurich who gets it as far as the neutral zone. Tyler Jurich, perhaps the biggest story of this playoff series. He started the season with the Watertown Wolves. In 29 games, he amassed 54 points. And then in what's perhaps the biggest trade in FPHL history, was sent over to the Elmira Enforcers. And the Enforcers have not lost a game since a 10-game winning streak prior to the pause of the season. And since we've moved over to the virtual world, the Elmira Enforcers haven't lost a game yet. Jamie Lucas and Kyle Stevens on the draw. One by Lucas. At the point, this is Kozpoulos. Kozpoulos again. Well, the defense likes to pass. We've seen this happen plenty of times. Desjardins across and a quick shot on goal by Dominic Bajul. Here comes Mark Essery the other way. Essery a shot. Punched aside. Nice save. Five minutes gone by in the first. Some back and forth action. Here's Bajul with a shot. Saved by Passingham. Rebound is loose in the corner. Bajul picks it up. Puck in his skates. Essery comes by to steal. Out through the neutral zone come the enforcers. Essery was just a step off size. And Watertown had to be caref careful. They didn't get hit with too many men on the ice. Although, I'm not sure if that's a penalty that... The NHL series actually has coded into it. I know I haven't seen it, and, well, you figure everybody online would go nuts because it would happen at the worst time. Broken sticks get enough complaints. 
Passed in front, poked aside by Pominville. Here's Gino Mini, who had a goal in game two for Elmira with the puck again. He'll wind and fire, and that was blocked in front of a net. Watertown looking to clear, they do. Here's Lamoro up ahead for King. King circling, looking for an option. Doesn't know what to do with it. He's surrounded by three enforcers. Gives along for Bullard. Bullard back for King. This line found the back of the net twice in the 5-3 victory over the Danbury Hattricks last weekend. Back the other way. It's sent around the boards by Dimitro Babanko. Intercepted behind the net. And now Lamoro up ahead through the neutral zone. Across the blue line into Elmira's end. Lamoro stops, takes the shot, missed high and wide. Hey, surprised that one actually got through all that traffic in front. Now Carter for the Elmira Enforcers into the zone. Gives across a one-timer, saved by Pominville, and he'll hold on. A fast-moving first period between these two teams. And we see Ryan Marker highlighted his three goals in that first series. Really paced everybody offensively. Babanko on the draw against Liam Little. Carter now. Sent around the boards. Back up at the point. Matthews. Carter. A drive. Blocked. Picked up and taken out of the zone. This is Sherman. For Watertown. Across for Bruce. Now dropped off. Little a shot into the glove. A passing him and he'll hold on. It's a nice tic-tac-toe passing by the Watertown Wolves. But Troy Passingham hasn't missed a beat from the first series as he keeps a goose egg up on the board and we see Kyler Matthews getting hit. Kyler Matthews had two goals in a game against Delaware. That was the eight to five victory, the first game of that series. Matthews in 10 games played before the pause had recorded one assist. Now a one-timer from the slot saved by Passingham. He'll hold on again, Tyson Bruce finding lots of open space and for once we're seeing the enforcers give up that area between the hash marks between the hashes and the top of the circles they did a great job of shutting that down against the Delaware Thunder but perhaps a different defensive thought process against these Watertown Wolves here's Mark Essery as we're more than halfway through the first period a fast moving first period nice change of pace Hudson Michaelis back for Essery. Stevens gives back to Matthews. Matthews stripped of the puck by Ryan Marker. Marker will lead things out the other way. Two on two into the zone as it's given across to Devney. Attempted back to go back for Marker. Knocked away, cleared all the way down, and that will be icing. So 6.34 to go now in the first period of play. Ryan Marker unable to find the back of the net. We have not seen too much of that first line of Ahmed Mafu, Stepan Timofeyev, and Tyler Jurich too, far, too much for Elmira. Here's Dejarlay for Bob Jewell. His shot is blocked. Bunch of enforcers in the way there. Kept alive by the Wolves. Only for a moment, San, San Stable will get it and send it around the boards. Given back up at the point. Dejarlay. Time stops for a moment. Nobody seems to notice. Bob Jewell, a shot saved by Passingham. And he'll hold on again. I give the Watertown Wolves credit. They are certainly giving a different look than what the Elmira Enforcers saw against the Delaware Thunder. As we're starting to see the Enforcers change things up defensively, trying to clog up that high slot. It'll be uh, Tyler Bullard on the draw against Ahmed Mafuz. Mafuz with a clean win. Glenn Patterson along for Timofeyev, and Timofeyev will bring it into the Watertown zone. Giving it across Mafuz. Mafuz knocked off the puck. Jurich, he scores! Tyler Jurich! And it's 1 nothing Elmira! I'm not sure who has the Tyler is dreamy sign in the stands. No offense. But that first line for the Enforcers coming on through and they find the back of the net for Jurich it is his second goal of the playoffs and no surprise that Stepan Timofeyev with the primary assist he has been absolutely electric for the enforcers and now they find themselves with a one nothing lead getting back to the dreaminess of Tyler Jurich perhaps 
the beard is something that works out. As that shot goes off the post, passing him, finds it behind him, and he holds on. Boy, the Wolves nearly able to respond. We saw that plenty of times with the Elmira and Delaware series. On four separate occasions, two goals scored less than 30 seconds apart and robbed on the opportunity Tyler Bullard, who has started to really find his offensive pace for these Wolves in the playoffs. You never know who's going to be the hero. Right now, the Wolves just need to get a goal. They'll need the puck first as it's Babanko leading things through the neutral zone. Now Jurich. Jurich a shot, saved. The rebound picked up by Mr. Dreamy. Jurich again in the corner. He finds Mafuz. Ahmed Mafuz. Across for Timofeyev. He scores! Step on Timofeyev. And it's 2-0 Elmira. Well, the biggest fan of Timofeyev. You see him in the crowd, and why not? What a one-timer. Lancing one off the post and in. Not much that Jeremy Pominville can do there as left out in no man's land was William Lamoureux. Timofeyev able to give himself the open space. And just like that, the Enforcers have now jumped out to a 2-0 lead. Wolves looking to respond, but again, they'll need possession of the puck. This is Harrison. Driving wide, turning, bumped off the puck. Zach Peace picks it up, delayed call coming up against the Wolves. To the bench, goes Passingham. Tyler Jurich, the extra attacker, gives to Yarwood, now Patterson. Zach Tucker picks it up. Or check that Brandon Tucker. Zach Tucker was a roommate of mine in college. Here's Zach Peace, as there are Zachs everywhere now. Tucker, four piece, a shot saved by passing, or check that by Pominville. Unable to hold the blue line is Tyler Jurich as he goes off for a change. And Ahmed Mafuz will come on. Still a delayed call against Watertown. Tucker up ahead for Mafuz with under a minute to play in the period. Mafuz's pass finally is touched up by Tyson Bruce as that was about three minutes of game time that was taken off of the clock. 45 seconds remain in the period. And going to the box is William Lamoureux. He'll sit two minutes for a hooking. And the Elmira faithful know that's a good call. Stevens, Michaelis, Essery up front for the enforcers. Bagjul, Marker, the forwards for Watertown. And it'll be Bagjul who's able to clear it just over the blue line. JT Walters goes over far side. Essery, Essery shakes off a check. He finds Michaelis with a shot saved by Pominville. Now Stevens again. Mini knocked off his stick, but Walters keeps it alive. His shot goes wide. Michaelis with the rebound. Six seconds to go. Stevens a shot saved. The rebound loose on the side of the cage. Picked up and cleared out of the zone by Konspoulos. And that'll do it for the first period of play. As the Elmira Enforcers, they're not knocking on the door. They're knocking it down. They lead 2-0 at the end of one period of play, and they'll have a minute 15 remaining on their power play, their first of the evening, as we get some replays from the first period, as Jeremy Pominville bested twice in that period. Step on Timofeyev, Tyler Jurich, that first line getting things done for the enforcers, and they'll get, you know, approximately 10 seconds in the locker room. Elmira out shooting Watertown by an 11 to 9 margin through 20 minutes of play, but Watertown has the advantage when it comes to time of possession. But this Elmira power play, how dangerous have they been really all throughout the season, converting at 23% during the regular season, and they already have a two goal lead. Short handed though, this is Marker into the zone. Bob Jewell will wrap one around the boards, cut off by Patterson. D to D, Yarwood. And Elmira looks to break out with 40 to go on the man advantage. Here's Ahmed Mafuz across for Jurich. Jurich tried stick handling through a pair of Wolves defenders. No sale there. Cleared all the way down. And Troy Passingham will go into the restricted area to settle the puck down. Here's Cameron Yarwood, the defenseman, coming back the other way. Now Jurich a drive, saved the rebound by Mafuz. And Pominville got both of them. Penalty has expired. We're back to five-a-side hockey. Timofeyev picking up a loose puck on the sidewall. Gives him a Fuza shot into the glove of Pominville. And the native of Mattis, Ontario will hold on 
for a defensive zone faceoff as this is what we've seen from Elmira. The first period, a little back and forth. At one point, we saw the Delaware Thunder in game one with a two goal lead over the Elmira Enforcers. But like a vice or perhaps like a Houdini trick, the longer it goes on, the tighter it gets. Off the draw, Wolves looking to gain possession. Kicked up along the boards, but not out. Yarwood for Stevens. A shot gloved by Pominville. And he'll hold on once again. As this second period has been all Elmira. And I'm sure the 50,000 strong here at First Arena, not a seat to be had, are quite happy to see it. Here's Kyle Stevens on the draw. Stevens pushed away from the puck. Taken by the Watertown Wolves, and it'll be King trying to toe drag his way across the blue line. No sale as Lane King can't get it done. Now Essery stops, finds Minnie, Michaelis, Essery, Michaelis, Walters, Minnie, Walters. Shot, saved. The rebound came out. Sanstebo able to gain possession. Here's Cole Sanstebo out of the zone. Up ahead, he finds Lane King. King sends one behind the net onto the stick of Dallas Desjardins, but then Desjardins lost possession of the puck, comes out into the neutral zone. Things again getting a little pixelated. Elmira seems none worse to wear, except now they've given it up. Here's Tyler Bullard the other way. Sent across the slot, unable to control the pass with Tyson Bruce. Wolves having some trouble with their passing. Here's Bullard again with the puck. Pass once again intercepted. This time JT Walters. Bruce takes it right back. Bruce watched carefully, stolen away by Kyle Stevens. Stevens for Tucker. Brandon Tucker goes back, Matthew Stevens. Zach Pisa shot, and that one's punched aside by Pominville. Six and a half gone by in the second. This is Sherman. Sherman again, a shot kicked aside. Nice save by Troy Passingham. First line on the ice now. Bruce. Again, time stops, but he's able to fight it off. Babanko with it. Given across Carter, Matthews. Carter, Matthews, Babanko. Knocked off the puck, Babanko picks it up again. Peace. Zach Peace gives across Yarwood, Patterson, Yarwood, Patterson, Babanko. Peace, Yarwood, Patterson, Yarwood. Nope. Tucker now across for Zach Peace back to Glenn Patterson. Patterson tries filtering one down low for Babanko. It's knocked away. Patterson with it again. All Elmira here in the second. Patterson's shot gets blocked. Coachman picks it up. He'll give to Michael Desjardins. Desjardins one on two into the zone. Desjardins winds and fires, and that's into the shin pads of Glenn Patterson. Quickly back the other way is Ahmed Mafuza shot saved by Pominville, and he holds on as that was wired for the back of the net. But a great job by Jeremy Pominville getting big in his cage. Only five foot 11, but he comes out very aggressively. Meanwhile, we'll just show off the handiwork of Troy Passingham as he's been perfect halfway through this game. Mafuz and Marker on the draw, one by Mafuz. Patterson gets blown up, lost his bucket in the meantime. Now coming back the other way is Derek Boudreau. Boudreau's pass eventually finds its way across the port. Now Marker a shot, handcuffed, never made its way through. Glenn Patterson, I'm not sure if he's actually bald or not. We'll see if he goes for the bucket, probably not. Dumped on down by the enforcers. Port gets met by Mafuz, and Mafuz comes up with it. Mafuz goes back to the point. New defenseman out on the ice. And another big hit as Kyler Matthews nearly gets knocked into the shadow realm. Here's Tyler Jurich again. The former Watertown Wolf gives back to Stepan Timofeyev. Matthews given down low. Looks like Matthews managed to actually keep his helmet on. Powell gives along for Devaney. Devaney along for Boudreaux. Boudreaux in front, shot blocked. Boudreaux picks up the puck. A backhander weakly towards goal. Passingham gets a stick on it. Babanko comes up with it. And he'll get to the red line before dumping it all the way down. Kalpuzos. The defenseman for Watertown sends it right onto the stick of Gino Mini, the former Battle Creek Rumblebee, and he fills it along for, for Novacell. First time that we've said his name tonight. Novacell lost the puck. Bullard gives along Kalpuzis. Along for Desjardins. Now Lane King. 
King with an option. He's shot saved by Passingham. And he holds on. Troy Passingham with the prettiest looking save of the game. Will we get another look at it? Of course not. It's the NBC broadcast truck. Now we get another Passingham save. Not bad. Not as pretty as he robs Lane King on the two on one. Babanko and Jamie Lucas on the draw. Lucas manages to win it. Bajul back to the point of shot. Saved by Passingham. Running into the boards and getting confused for a moment was Michael Desjardins. Desjardins eventually recovers. Up ahead, this is Brandon Hussey. Hussey stops, gets the puck back. Walters, down low, goes through the skates of his teammate. And back the other way, it's Bogjul. He finds Lucas a shot, gloved by Passingham. And Passingham will await another faceoff in the defensive end as he has looked very good in this game. He's looked pretty much good ever since we moved things into the virtual world as Elmira had a 10 game winning streak before the pause. Again, I don't think that they have lost since. That gives them something like a 20 game winning streak coming into this game. We'll have to see exactly what that number is. Meanwhile, pass in front, saved by passing him the rebound and getting bowled over from behind. A full scorpion as Tyson Bruce nearly saw the front of his toes coming up from his back. Here's Hudson Michaelis with it. For Essary, a shot saved by Pominville. Pominville eventually elects to play it. Nobody knew that. Stevens comes up with it. Essary at the point, gives to Yarwood. Yarwood will wrap this around the board. Nobody wearing green and black there. Instead, it goes all the way back to Glenn Patterson. Patterson can't get it down low, and it's a two-on-one the other way for Watertown. Shot saved by Passingham. He'll hold on. Corey Sherman finally found lots of open ice in front of him as Elmira getting a bit aggressive in the offensive zone. They only lead by two, and looking to extend upon that lead after that save that Jeremy Pominville inexplicably decided just to toss the puck into the corner and oh it allowed Elmira to stay on the offense here's Lane King a shot saved by Passingham and he holds on again Boy, Lane King is getting so many opportunities in this game you figure he's got to find the back of the net eventually and for Lane King I mean what a nice player he was for the Watertown Wolves. Only seven games played, and yet he recorded 15 points. That's over two points a game for those of you keeping score at home. Ten seconds left in the period. Here's Harrison. Drops back to Tucker. Tucker with plenty of open space. A shot gets deflected wide. Two seconds and one. And that'll do it for the second period. So at the end of two... Neither team able to find the back of the net in that stanza. The Elmira Enforcers maintain their 2-0 lead. And they are now 20 minutes away from taking a 1-0 series lead over the Watertown Wolves. They managed to sweep the Wolves in a last year's affair. As for Watertown, head coach Paul McLean, well, he'll have to get some things going, some changes perhaps, as now we see Elmira still out shooting the Watertown Wolves, but they have taken over on the time of attack. You know, it only says an extra minute time on attack, but boy, it feels much, much larger than that. Nice look at First Arena, recently renovated. I believe it now holds 60,000, as they have sold 10,000 more tickets during this game. And Kyle Powell will lead things off with Ryan Marker. Marker. Gives it back to Port. Now Marker and Port. Powell. Here we go again. Marker. Port. Powell. Port. Powell. Port. Powell. Wait. <laughs> and then having his stick fail him eventually. I believe that was Jamie Lucas. Oh. Back underway as Glenn Patterson sends it down deep. Kyle Powell will be the first one there. He sends it around the boards. Nearly got out of the zone. Patterson keeps it alive. Tim Lefebvre gives to Jurich, who's knocked off the puck. Can't get a shot off. Here's Derek Boudreau the other way. Boudreau for Marker. Marker a shot. Saved by Passingham. He'll hold on. 
Well, between Ryan Marker and Derek Boudreau, the two leading scorers for the Watertown Wolves. Boudreau with 72 points in 46 games. Marker with 76 points in 42 games. Of course, the first 30 of them in the first 55 points came as a member of the Delaware Thunder. So perhaps Ryan Marker can gain a little vengeance for his former teammates against these Elmira Enforcers, but the Enforcers really dominating play early on here through the third. Here's King, Calpuzos, and now Bogjul. Bogjul winds and fires, saved by a passing hand. Rebound came loose. Back at the point now, this is on Stavos. On Stavos sending it down deep. Not sure who that was in the corner. It was Jamie Lucas. And then a one-time shot goes off the mask of Passingham. And he seems fine. Here is Stevens. Essary. And now Zach Peace. Zach Peace, who has found the back of the net in every game in the playoffs so far, has it knocked off of his stick. Coming back the other way, Colson Stabo pays a physical price, but still manages to somehow get the puck into the offensive zone. Here's Spencer Carter. Lane King takes the puck away from him. Coachman, Lamoro, one-time shot by Desjardins is stopped by Passingham. King picks up a loose puck behind the net. Has an option in the front, instead elects to take it himself. He's tripped up on the play. The Elmira fans are not happy with it. But the Watertown Wolves are going to go on to their first power play of the evening. And trailing by two at this point in the game, well, you figure that a goal might not be required, but it would definitely help. Ryan Marker will step in for the faceoff. He has Boudreaux and Devaney up front with Kyle Powell and Vlad Port on the point. Here's Stefan Timofeyev, short-handed. Timofeyev wraps one around the boards. It goes past everybody before Kyle Powell is able to come up with it. Now Powell gaining speed through the neutral zone. Stops, gives to Marker. Marker, a drop pass to nobody in particular. It goes all the way back to the goaltender, Jeremy Pominville. Brian Marker, what are you thinking? And you get hit for your troubles. Now another shot saved by Passingham. He'll hold on. As Brian Marker, the person, would have taken the shot, he most assuredly would not have dropped past it to his goaltender 140 feet away. And he probably would have avoided the check by Cameron Yarwood as well. 56 seconds to go on the power play, 12 minutes to go in regulation time. 50-50 draw. Is controlled by Tyler Jurich and the enforcers. Jurich will gain the red line and send it all the way around the board. Mafuz manages to pick it up. Tries hitting Glenn Patterson. Now a breakaway the other way. It's Bajul in alone. Great save by Passingham. Oh, that's the best offensive opportunity at the Watertown. Wolves have had so far. Another shot off the post. And Passingham again makes the save. That's Troy Passingham. I'm not sure what sort of cheat codes he's using. But my goodness, two great saves in a row. First robbing Bajul on the breakaway. And the production truck doesn't want to give us a shot off the post. Why not? Who wants to see it? Officially, it's not even a shot on goal. As the Watertown Wolves have now hit the iron twice. Shot from the point by Sanstebo got blocked, cleared out of the zone. We're back to five-a-side hockey as we're getting close to the 10-minute mark, but the puck gets sent out of play. The faceoff will be right in front of the Elmira bench. 10.38 to go in a very important game one. Faceoff won by the Wolves. Unable to get into the offensive zone. At least at first, now will be Lamoureux breaking on in. Lamoureux stops, gives across a one-timer off the stick of Corey Sherman. And Passingham's able to shrug that off. Here's Mark Essery. Essery lost the puck, a one-time shot, and Jeremy Pominville is able to respond. These goal, both goaltenders have made some great saves in this game. Here's Matthews at the blue line. Carter, Matthews, his shot gets blocked. Matthews actually broke his stick on the play. Corey Sherman coming the other way. Sherman looking for the shot, takes it, might have gone wide, but Passingham's able to get a stick on it regardless. Just about eight minutes to go in regulation time. Lane King with the puck in the corner. Goes back to the point for Coachman. Coachman now D to D Lamro. For King, a shot saved by Passingham. 
And Troy Passingham will hold on. Well, Passingham is certainly my vote for first star of the game. Let's take a look at some of the best saves that he's had so far. Again, he's been beaten twice, but goaltenders and posts, they have a wonderful relationship. And you see why, although quite honestly, it seems like a one-way street. I'm not sure what a goalie gives to a post, but well, either way. Here's Tyler Bullard with an offensive zone faceoff. Seven and a half to go in regulation time. Shot again saved by Passingham. Watertown has at least picked up the offense here in the third period. Unable to hold the blue line. Coming back the other way, this is Marco Novosel. Novosel gives a cross for Babanko. Now Matthews off the bench, Walters. Babanko sent around the board. Getting there first is William Lamoureux. Lamoureux unable to clear. Lamoureux then sees the puck hop over his stick. Hooking on the play, and that's going to be another penalty as Novacell nearly got ridden like a wave runner. And I believe that's going to be Tyler Bullard going to the box. Indeed it will be, and that is not what the Watertown Wolves need right now. They are not in the lead. They're trailing by two, and... Well, it's 5.55 to go in the third period. Time is not their friend. As for that fan who wants Tyler Bullard to retire, Bullard is indeed a rookie. Here's Lucas. Up the boards, but not out. Knocked down by Timothy of Yarwood a drive into the glove of Palmonville. He'll corral the rebound with Ahmed Mafuz on the doorstep and hold on for a draw as Mafuz getting involved. Physically, that is one thing that he excels at. Med Mafuz is the kind of player when you're playing against him, you absolutely hate him, but when he's on your team, he's one of your favorites. So here's Mafuz on the draw. One back to Gino Mini across for Jurich a shot, save the rebound, trickles wide. Walters. His shot goes wide. Hominville had the opportunity to clear it and instead allowed his defenseman Kyle Powell to send it all the way down. Mini picking it up from Passingham and now Timofeyev under five to play. Here's Timofeyev, top of the circle, stepping on in a shot. Puck is loose in front of the net. Hominville on top of it. And the faceoff will remain in the Watertown zone. 4.27 to go in the third period. 32 seconds to go in Elmira's second power play of the evening. They're 0 for 1 so far. As we see Stepan Timofeyev looking for what would be the dagger, you would figure, as the Watertown Wolves have gotten the shots on goal, but Troy Passingham has stopped them all. Yarwood gets upended at the blue line. Now gets the puck back, gives to Patterson for Michaelis. Michaelis in front. Essery was tripped on the play. Not sure if that's a weak call or not. We'll have to get another look. But going to the box, Colston Stabo. As we'll take a look here. Boy, I'm, I didn't see much there. Now, San Stabo's the one who has to retire. I feel like this Elmira fan just has all the Watertown nameplates ready to go for that sign. You can't have everybody retire. That makes no sense. 4.07 to go in regulation time. A clear off the faceoff. And once again, the Elmira Enforcers with 100 seconds to go on the power play. They're now 0 for 2, yet they hold the 2-0 lead. Here is a redirection by Patterson, held on to by Pominville. Defensive zone faceoff coming up to Pominville's right. As the Watertown Wolves need to stay disciplined, they need to stay out of the penalty box if they want to get back into this game. Offensive zone faceoff, Mafuz, Jerich, Timofey have no surprise that they are the ones on the ice. Here's Gino Mini. Mini gives across Timofey. Timofey back to Walters, now Mini. Jerich, Mini, here we go again, Jerich. Hey, nice, gives along for Timofey a kick save by Pominville and that gets cleared out of the zone. Under three to play in regulation time. Elmira with the 2-0 lead. Here's JT Walters at the point of shot. Saved by Pominville. He'll hold on once again. As time is becoming much rarer for the Watertown Wolves. They have 27 seconds to go before they'll be back to even strength. 
Watertown was one of the most disciplined teams. Perhaps you could say they were the most disciplined team during the regular season. You can also put the Battle Creek Rumblebees in that category as well as this gets cleared on down the ice. Always nice to have an excuse to talk about our friends in Battle Creek. Bajul intercepts the pass. Powell tries to give back to Bajul, but now we've got 100 seconds to go in regulation time. Picked up by Marker. Marker trying to get the puck into the Elmira zone. He does. We'll start keeping our eyes on Jeremy Pominville as he now goes to the bench. Extra attacker on for the Watertown Wolves. They've lost possession of the puck. Essery gives along for Stevens at the red line. Yarwood off the side of the cage. Constable will pick it up and send it around the boards. 45 to go. Watertown needs two to tie. Here's Corey Sherman. His shot right into the pads of Passingham. Little a shot. Passingham another save. Harrison picks it up. Now Zach Peace at the blue line. Gives a cross for Harrison. And Harrison a cross for Brandon Tucker. The easy redirect home. That fan doesn't know whose stick he wants. But the Elmira Enforcers, an empty net goal. And their winning streak will continue. And they will take a 1-0 series lead over the Watertown Wolves. Boy, the more things change, the more they stay the same. As this Elmira Enforcers team has been nigh unbeatable. And that streak will continue here tonight. 27.4 to go in the period. This will be Matthews. Some, just some simple bookkeeping left in this game. Tucker will wrap it around the boards. 15 seconds left. Zamor Lamoureux, pass knocked away. Tucker is shot. Pominville sends it into the corner. 10 seconds remaining. And the Amira Enforcers are going to skate away at home with a 3-0 victory over the Watertown Wolves. And now they are one win away from returning to the Commissioner's Cup Finals. They lost 3-1 to, to Carolina last season, and they'll look to rewrite the record books in this simulated affair. Now we'll stick along, or stick around to see who the stars of the game were. Again, we see that fan not knowing whose stick he wants. Perhaps he can get a broken one. There were a couple of those in this game. Tyler Jurich, the game-winning goal, came all the way back in the first period, a redirection on a Stefan Timofeya pass. And that was all that the Elmira Enforcers needed. Final stats on the game. Watertown ends up out shooting Elmira by a 32 to 31 margin. You see Elmira with the minute advantage on the time of the attack, and again, it felt like it was much longer than that. Troy Passingham is your first star of the game. A 32 save shutout for Passingham. It is now his third shutout in his past six games. I think that's good. Tyler Jurich, Stepan Timofeyev, each with a goal and an assist. They are your number two and number three stars. But that'll wrap it up for us here from a simulated first arena in Elmira. I'm Zach McGinnis saying so long. Hope that everybody is safe at home. Remember to wash your hands. And remember to tune in tomorrow evening as the series goes up to Watertown, New York. And the Watertown Wolves will fight for their playoff lives. Good night.